Worship is giving him the first place. Worship is acknowledge everything he is. And when he is satisfied, then he pours down his blessing. We waste too much time singing about ourselves. True worship. Is giving him first and then us. Chuck was mentioning yesterday that every spiritual battle is a battle about gods, it's a battle about worship. The very battle we are starting in heaven has to do with a God, a Babylonian God that is worship five times a day, is worshiped by millions of people, sold out people that are willing to give their lives, tying themselves up with bombs to please an evil God. This is a war of worshipers. This is a war of those that understand what is going on in the spirit. And those that understand knows that worship, true worship activates heaven. So heaven can operate over the earth. Worship is one of the most powerful tools because it releases God into the earth. There's a time of great affliction in the time when Midian had oppressed the people of Israel. And the Lord sees a man called Gideon. And this is an hour of deliverance. This is an hour when God has heard the cries of a man that was different. Because if you read, Gideon was different while everybody else was crying out before, because of the famine, because of the robbery of the Midianites. Gideon, he was keeping food to give to his brethren. A true heart of mercy. And this is the heart of a deliverer. The one that cares for the people. And the angel of the Lord appear into before Gideon. And he says, This is the hour of your deliverance. There's a goddess called Asera that all these people worship. And that's why they are everybody's in bondage. That is why. Because when other gods are lifted up. Then there's misery, then is tragedy, then, then there is all kind of evil in the world. And the Lord said, I am going to put an end to this God. I am going to put an end to this situation. And I'm going to use your life, Gideon. But in order to use your life, I need to know what kind of a worshiper you are. Worship is not just singing. That is just an outer manifestation. Worship is an attitude of the heart that recognizes that God is God. Worship is the attitude of a heart that is totally surrendered to God. And whatever the master says, the worshiper flows and obeys. And God is speaking to Gideon and he says, I am going to do a battle and you are going to fight and I am going to give you your enemies in your hand. But before that happens, something needs to happen in the heavenlies. There has to be a war of worshipers. Now in a time of famine, Judges chapter 6 and verse 25. It says, now it came to pass the same night that the Lord said to him, 
take your father's young bull, the second bull of seven years old, and tear down the altar of Baal that your father has, and cut down the wooden image that is beside it, and build an altar to the Lord your God on top of this rock in the proper arrangement, and take the second bull and offer a burnt sacrifice with the wood of the image which you shall cut down. In a time of great famine, God asked this young man to bring an offering. And if you understand offerings, offerings is one of the most high ways of worship. Every time most all the time that the Lord speaks about honoring him has to do with the way we worship, with the way we offer unto him. The way we offer unto him represents the level of your worship, represents the level of our relationship and determines the deliverers of nations. There's the army of God here. And there are deliverers of nations in this place here tonight. And the Lord is saying, I am going to fight a battle. I am going to fight a battle that will make the difference in your land. But I need two bulls. Now, if you understand the level of offering a bull represented was the highest way to offer to the Lord. A very poor people will just offer little birds and then you will offer a sheep and then you will offer different kinds of animals and the highest way of worship was a bull. Now, do does God know what is he doing when he asks a poor young man in a time of starvation to offer a sacrifice of a bull? Does, know, does God know what is he doing in order to deliver a nation? Because many times we are the ones that prepare the strategy. But God is saying, I have a strategy. And I want to offend the demonic forces. I want to offend the demonic forces that has been rising against your life, against your finances, against your ministries, against your lives, against your countries. I want to offend those gods and destroy those gods. And the way I'm going to do it is demonstrate them that I receive higher offerings than them. You know how much people pay the warlocks and the witches to do a work. They pay thousands of dollars to have a little defeated God operate on their behalf. Thousands of dollars. Thousands of dollars are presented to the queen of heaven every day. In the Islam, thousands of dollars are given to demonic forces and not only Thousands of dollars, but lives are given to those gods. Today is a day of destiny. Today is a day where the Lord is going to handpick deliverers of nations. And I want you to bow your, your head. Because we are going to take an offering in righteousness. An offering that will determine the battle in your life. We're about to enter a time of fullness, 
a fullness of every single design of God in the earth. But God is looking for worshipers. Mammon is your worst, your worst enemy. Mammon is the God of wealth. Mammon is the God that in most cases is the one that rules and speaks to people on what to give, on what not to give, on what they can do, on what they cannot do. And we're going to destroy tonight the power of mammon. We're going to destroy the power of financial distress. We're going to destroy the power of Babylon. There is, a, there is a political, religious Babylon, but there's also a financial Babylon. And that is the one that causes the famine. That is, that is the one that causes the shortage in the ministries today. God wants to lift up to take an offering in righteousness. In righteousness. And he said, I want a bull. I want a bull. In many cases, a bull can represent a hundred dollars. In other cases, a bull can represent a thousand dollars or five thousand dollars. Or $10,000. Every person is different. But I'm telling you in the name of my God Jesus. There are two bulls in the house of your father. There are two bulls in the house of your father. He's asking you. To give one. He has already provided this. This is a battle of worshipers. This is a battle of people with understanding. As the financial Babylon is being judged. Everybody that is in that system will be judged as well. Come ye out of her my people. So you shall not receive part of his plagues. We need to hit that thing in the face. We need to hit the face of mammon. It is not righteous. It is not right. That awesome ministries as Peter and Doris Wagner. Visionaries as few people in the world. Apostolic mantle, as few people in the world are striving, and I say this as their personal intercessor, striving, crying out to God and us with them so they can fulfill the call they have in their lives. And you heard the type of battles this man, 72 years old, is about to fight. Fearless. Of what the devil can do fearless of what the people can say and he says and he dreams and he says there's so many things I would do if I will only have the money as I am saying this there's an apostolic mantle that just broke into this place there's battle here there's battle here and the Lord is saying to those that dare tonight to bring me the bull that I am asking. I am going to cause a breakthrough in your ministry. If you have been advancing, slowly climbing up, I'm going to cause a rising to the peak. For I am the Lord thy God that fights this battle. And the Lord is tired to hear the cries, the weeping of true ministers of God that cannot, oper cannot operate in the fullness of their godly dreams because mountains of shortage Caused by demonic forces 
are in front of them. But we're going to knock those walls down. And we're not going to knock them down in Peter and Doris' ministry. We're going to knock them down in anybody that dares to stand up for God and say, I will bring a bull and I will knock that thing down, not only for their ministry, but for my ministry as well. Now bow your heads, because this is not the word of a woman, this is God speaking. And he is the one that has a figure for each one of you. Mammon is going to speak as well. And he's going to tell you, don't you dare bring that. Knock him down. Knock him with your faith. Knock him. Knock him with your worship. For too long the church has served Mammon. Let's worship God. And when you're ready, start bringing that bull to this altar as you did yesterday with Cindy. This is a very serious moment. This is a very serious moment. Hear well what God is speaking. The deliverance of many things in your life depends on this ball. Don't bring a sheep. Don't bring a bird. If you have to, a pledge to make because you don't have the money here or you need to do some movement in your accounts, then make a pledge in the envelopes or, or post it a check to Global Harvest Ministries. Oh, Riba Mama. Oh, Shiki Araba. If the music can play, it's a solemn moment, beautiful moment, in which true worshipers are honoring God. Those stay in your seats, stand up and come and honor God. Stand up and come and honor God. We don't approach a holy God with empty hands. Never, never, never. We don't approach such a God as we have with empty hands. If you have no money, bring jewels, bring whatever you have, but do not approach this mighty God with empty hands. In a shay, 
Not kind of joy. There's a lot of people sitting down. Stand up and come to the altar. Come to the altar. Isn't he worthy? You're going to spend 10, 20, 50 dollars going out to eat. Bring that to the Lord. Bring that to the Lord. Isn't he worthy? of a sacrifice of one meal in your life? Isn't he worth it to do a sacrifice? So stand up and come to the altar and let's do this fast because the word of the Lord is just burning in my heart. Na mashe na kai na tsui na tsei na rai I rabando she na hai na tsui I na rai I na mai rabando shai la rai na tsei Urro ma hai Urro Ushi, ushi, ina no sha no ho, ina no she na kan do rai de tsu de tse, ina yashu hun do mai na tse na kan do rai de tsu na she na kai. Rabot na hai, rabot na hai, rabot na hai na chu. Oh, 
its shape.